Hi, I'm Kelly with Pins and Needles Kits, and today we're going to be filming part two of our panel tote bag. Um, in part one, we did the straps, the pocket on the inside, and we talked about piping. And so today we're going to do the bag, out, outer part of the bag, the um, quilting, and the lining. So we're going to put that to the side. This is our pattern. It's called the panel tote, and so you can get that on our website. And I have... Um, a bunch of pieces here and we're going to be putting the front together and I do have one side of the bag completed so you can see how that goes together. So you're going to be cutting by the directions the, um, the center panel and two side pieces. And if you have fabric like this that is directional, which means you know you have a top and a bottom, you want to make sure that you put this together so that the tops are at the top. Um, there's nothing worse than putting a project together, getting all finished and realizing you have one side upside down. So that um, what I would do is maybe put a little um, piece of tape or something on the top of it or the bottom, just be consistent so that you know what um, what you're doing and that way when you put it together it makes it a lot easier for you. So I'm going to put this aside. We have, um, this is Bozel Interform and when you get the kit it has, oh it's got thread all over it, <laughs> um, there's one piece and so you'll take that one piece and cut it in half so that you have one piece for the front and one for the back. It's approximately going to be 14 by 18, something like that. And so to make the front, we have to have our center panel and our two side pieces. And so we're gonna take our center panel, we're gonna lay that down and um, we wanna put piping in between here. And so there's a couple ways to put piping on. You have, um, one is a, I'll put these right here, maybe Brittany can zoom in on them. There is a um, zipper foot here. And then this is a piping foot. So the zipper foot, what that does is you move, the, you put the zipper foot on, you move the needle either to the right or to the left, and then you're going to be sewing with that piping right there on the side of that, of that piping. And your grandson in the background. And then this one is a piping foot and has this nice um, deep little channel, and you can um, run the foot right over the piping. So I'm going to be using that foot. I like to use that. And if you're a brand new sewer, you can Take this and um, sew this on first, and then sew your um, your side piece to it, like so. I've been doing this a really long time, so I'm just gonna kinda put some clips in it and do my sewing um, all at one time. It just saves you a little bit of time. So let me get that ready for you, and then I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I like to use Wonder Clips to put my, um, to hold these together, or just any type of clips. They're really handy, um, better than pins, I think, because you're not gonna, snag your hand or anything on them and so I have this all together I'm just sandwiching the piping in between and then when I get finished and I open this up and so I have my piping right in looks really nice now one thing I didn't do and so I'll do it on the next is I can see my stitching line right here I don't know if you can see that or not so if I um, will move my needle one position back towards my piping that will cover that line up so if your machine is able to change needle positions then you can take when you're sewing the piping together move your needle all the way over to the right so you're piping together and then when you're putting this together move your needle back over one or two um, places to the left and that will um, stitch closer to the piping and hide that and make your bag look more professional. So let me, um, I will sew the other side on this and show you how I quilted it. So next we're going to be quilting the bag and so this is a walking foot. If you have one this is a really nice thing to use when you're doing multiple layers of fabric because this will move up and down with the needle bar and then um, it feeds the fabric on the top the same speed as the bottom. So um, we've got our top together here. What we're going to do is find the center of our panel just by folding it in half, right sides together, okay? And then you're going to mark the center, mark a center line down um, the middle of your bag, um, measure that, and then you'll line up your um, center of the fabric with the center of the panel. I mean it should pretty much fit but I just never like to take any chances because depending on the seam allowance that you use when you're sewing things together it may not um, come out exactly right. Now if you have some like temporary spray adhesive you could actually lightly spray this and then um, lay this down and it will stick. If not you can just take some clips and clip around the edges to hold it in place. The next thing you want to do is when you find the center, you, you want to mark the center of your 
quilting, I just did straight lines for my quilting. Um, but you can quilt however you'd like. So this is going to be, let's see, where's my center? So seven inches, so about three and a half inches is my center. So this is um, a heat away uh, chalk, kind of like a wax. And so what I'll do is I'll just mark my center here. And I quilted on about, oh, about every inch or so, approximately. Um, I didn't get real worried about how um, how close together I got my quilting or how accurate even um, and so I'll just make marks and then when I hit this with the iron when I'm finished the marks will go away so I'll get this all marked up and get this quilted and we'll um, finish our back. Okay so I have all my quilting done so then what I did was I took it over to my cutting mat and made sure that all the edges of the rectangle were square you know nice and straight all the way around and then I measured in on the bottom I think it's about two and a half inches and then cut it all the way up to this corner here and you do that on both sides and then you just get rid of that so that gives you that nice cute um, uh, angles for the tote and then in the pattern there is a, um, a template so that you can cut out your um, center circle or semicircle. so I have that the other thing you want to do is make sure that when you're doing this that your front and your back are both the same size that's always important um, and you know your your pattern may not end up exactly the same size as my measurements depending on how um, big of a seam allowance you take on the different parts but you know just make sure everything is nice and square and if your bag ends up being just a little bit smaller it's okay but it'll look really nice the other thing you want to do is use your bag the outer bag part to cut your linings um, to fit and what I like to do with my lining because sometimes the lining gets baggy inside is I like to cut um, about a half inch off the bottom of my lining so it's a little bit shorter and then that way it, it lays down in that bag a little bit better so the other thing we have to do is sew our pocket on I just did one and I showed you in the previous video how to make the pockets really simple so I'll sew this around here and then up the side and then we'll put the bag together now we're, um, we put our front and back of our um, lining right sides together and sew down the sides and across the bottom. But across the bottom you want to leave an opening about oh, three, three or four inches and um, that way that's what we're going to pull our whole bag through. So you don't want it to be too small so that you can get the bag through there. And then you're also going to cut out about a one inch square on each corner and I'm going to show you what we're doing that in just a minute. And then you'll also do the same thing to the bag front and back. So you've got your seam here. And then on this one, you sew all the way across the bottom, cut your little squares out. Then what we're doing is we're boxing our corners so that we have a flat bottom for our bag. And so what you do is you take this, put them together, line up your seam allowances. And we're going to clip that together to hold it. And then you'll sew across right across there and that makes that bottom have a little box to it. You do that on both ends and you also do that on the lining. So we have our bottom boxed and the bigger you cut your squares the bigger the bottom that you have on your bag. So um, I said one inch in the pattern but honestly you could do whatever um, size that you want. So I've done that on the lining and the bag so I put the lining um, right side out, I mean the the bag right side out, the lining is inside out. I pressed my seams open and then you simply slide the bag into the lining and it's not going to fit real well but it's okay. And then you're going to match up your seam allowances, your corners and everything, pin those together or clip them and we're going to sew around the top. So I'll get that all pinned together and show you how to sew that. Okay so I've um, started clipping around the edges, lining up everything and um, you don't have to put a whole lot and you're going to be stretching the lining a little bit because it is a little bit shorter than um, our bag. And then if you can take the um, tray or the box off of your machine and have this free arm open, it makes it a lot easier to sew this. So you would put this on here and we're going to sew all the way around the top of it. And then when we get finished, we'll turn it through the hole in the bottom of the bag. Once you have it sewn together all the way around, you want to clip your corners um, so that you can turn those nice. and then. You're going to clip into the curve almost to your stitching line. So just be careful that you don't cut your stitching line. This will help that curve turn really nicely and lay flat. Oops, and I just cut my stitching line. Told you not to do that. So I'll go back and re-sew that. All right. 
And then we'll turn this right side out. We'll top stitch it and put our shoulder straps on and we'll be finished. So um, I'm getting ready to turn this now. And if you notice, I sewed into my seam allowance right here. What that does is it allows you to um, turn this and not rip your seam. It makes the uh, seam a little bit stronger because it's, sometimes it's a little hard to pull all this through um, the hole. But once we get it through, we'll just top stitch that together. Just kind of work it out. My hands aren't working very well today. <laughs> So before I um, put the, uh, once I've turned it, and before I put this lining into my purse, I want to make sure that I line this up and sew this opening closed. So we'll just do a top stitch. You can hand stitch it if you want, but nobody's going to be inside your purse looking to see how you sewed it. So I'm just going to straight stitch it. Okay, so once we've got the lining inside the bag, we're going to go and take this to the ironing board, press this really good, and then we'll top stitch all the way around the bag. Once we've done that, we're going to put our handles on, and in the instructions it tells you exactly how to do that. You're going to put it here, sew a square around, come over here, sew a square. And so you'll do that for both handles. So our bag's finished. We have it top stitched, the handles are sewn on, and um, I love this the way these handles are because they're nice and soft, and um, it looks like you filled it with a tube, and it was a sim simple, easy way to do it. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and um, subscribe to our YouTube channel and we look forward to seeing you again next month.